When we come up on the UP because I wanted to do a video on the birch tree, I wanted to do a video on three species of mushrooms that grow on a birch tree. I'm going to show you chaga later on in the video, but right here on this tree I want to show you the birch polypore and I want to show you the horse hoof fungus, which both were found on the Iceman, the mummy they found in the glacier. He had horse hoof fungus on him, which is uh, one of the tender funguses. There are several funguses they call tender fungus used for carrying an ember, which we're also going to show you in this video. It's a pretty cool thing Don and I have been playing with, and the importance of birch, what you can do with it, and three mushrooms that grow on birch, not necessarily exclusively on birch, but three mushrooms that grow on birch, the chaga, horse of fungus, and the birch polypore. This beautiful guy right here. Now the birch polypore will get bigger. Notice this node right here because there are shelf funguses that grow on birch and various other species and there are no real look-alikes once you see this this node now this will get bigger Don will film up on the tree and show you old birch polypores in a second and note how it's covered right here now this can be peeled back and used to pack a wound to heal cuts, scrapes, burns, insect bites. This can be harvested fresh. It can be harvested old as long as it's still pliable. It can be sliced into lengths and made into tea. It can be used for parasites. It can be used for an immune builder. And a friend of mine just recently told me, but I haven't founded it. I haven't found any of the research on it, but they're starting to use this in research for AIDS. Wonderful. Birch polypore, easy to recognize. This will get bigger it'll be beige white underneath and then as it ages it'll turn cream and then dark into yellow up here are some old examples of the birch polypore that Don will show you and then the other neat one which is horse of fungus I wasn't lucky enough to find a brand new version of the horse hoof fungus on this particular tree, but I found old horse hoof and a relatively new horse hoof, which Don will have to come around and film, which will also add footage of the horse hoof fungus, which resembles a horse hoof. This can be used for carrying an ember. And it also has a material on the inside, which I'll show later on in the video, called Amadou, that can be pounded, boiled and pounded, and made into cloth, or made into, and this is a fresh one here. If I pull it, whoops, pulled it and it went down in the swamp. Here's an older version, which we'll show you in the video. It comes off the tree really relatively easily now on a fresh one it'll be almost white underneath and then it starts to turn cream and then it'll turn dark burnt brown and then it'll turn black it'll fill up with bugs and be hollow but this is the stage that you want it not for amadou but for carrying an ember the fresh ones are the ones you want the amadou which will be this orange substance that follows the mushroom all the way around its shell. We'll add more footage later in the video of fresh ones, I promise. And we're gonna do some fire starting with birch bark. One last thing I wanna say about the birch tree, it is the icon of the North, the symbol of the North. And personally, I think it is the most recognized tree in the world. I think everyone recognizes the birch tree as this beautiful white Northern symbol even more so than the maple leaf, the birch tree stands out in more human beings' minds than any other tree I can think of.
Now, the inner bark is edible. I've never ate it. I don't think I ever will. But this can be tapped just like a maple tree, and the sap can be used to make syrup, and it can be made, used to make birch beer, a soda-like drink that's delicious. The buds and the flowers can be eaten, and they are delicious. They can be eaten raw. And the bark is extremely volatile and waterproof. A lot of times when a birch falls dead, the wood on the inside will rot out and the bark stays in place as a perfect shell. That's how waterproof it is. So we'll make a fire with this. We will show you chaga and how it catches a spark. And then we will show you how the horse hoof holds the spark. Let's go have some fun. Birch polypore, relatively easy mushroom to identify. This is one, there are a lot of mushrooms that grow on a birch tree, but they also grow on other species of tree. Birch polypore grows on birch only. In this node right here is where it attaches to the tree. And of course it is a polypore, so it doesn't have gills, it has pores. And this membrane right here, when it's fresh, is a really interesting part of the mushroom. If you cut it and it's still fresh, you can peel this membrane and it's sticky. You can use it as a band-aid and it'll hold itself. A lot of times I go all the way around with it. The inside of the mushroom is antiviral, antifungal, anti-inflammatory. It can be used to extract bee stings. It can be used in small scratches, cuts, and wounds. What I do with this mushroom is I slice it in thin slices and make a tea for immune system. I wanted to add that part to this video, the birch polypore. Chaga, how to identify chaga. There's a very large piece above my head. And here's a very small piece right here. Now this piece would be way too small for me to harvest. And the piece that's above my head, I would take about 50% to ethically harvest it. A lot of times you use a saw to do that. Some people knock it loose. Try not to cut into the tree. If you don't cut into the tree, you should be able to have chaga continually grow on the tree. This birch has several pieces of chaga growing up it. And this is a piece of chaga. The outside of it will be gnarly and burly like it's been struck by lightning or charred by a fire. And the inside of it will be a brilliant yellow when you break it loose to an orange. And as it dries, it turns a darker orange. And then when you harvest it, it can be utilized by chopping it into chunks and turning it into a tincture or using those chunks in a tea. But in order to keep chaga in the forest, we only want to take 50% or less from each piece. This one would be too small to harvest. So you would want to take 50% of that large piece up there if you could find a way to cut it rather than knock it loose. And Dawn and I won't be harvesting this chaga because we've already been up north and got all the chaga that we're going to use for a year. Let's go see some more wonderful birch mushrooms. I promised to show you guys how we could use the different birch funguses for fire. Uh, 
The birch polypore can be used to strop a knife, the top of it. This isn't a birch polypore, I don't have one with me. This is the horse hoof fungus. This we're going to put an ember in where I put this hole and it's going to hold that ember for hours. And here I have a pan of dry chaga. The orange is the best part. That's the part that you want. It's going to catch a spark. And we're going to try to make that fire bundle there turn to flame. And then I'm going to show you how volatile birch bark is. So let's see if I can get a spark on this. It catches a spark pretty easy. You just got to get the spark in it and find one that smokes. So I'm going to do that a couple of times. Now of all those sparks, one of those had to have caught. Now to show you how volatile this is, I think what I'm going to do is pour some coffee on it. I gotta grab some coffee, I'll be right back. Luckily I keep it in my truck. Pour this on the rock. Birch bark is waterproof. and volatile. You don't want to start a fire, that's why we're on the rock. Okay, it looks like we have a good ember here. Looks like a few of them took. So I'm gonna take one of these. I'm gonna drop it in here. Leave that in there to set. While I try to get the fire bundle going with another ember. Ouch. Okay, let's see if we can get flame. See how the horse hoof is doing. See if you can see in here. Now it's believed that these were carried with an ember in it by early man so that they could pull the ember out as it smoldered for several hours and they could start a fire. Now I've done some experiments with these. I've used small ones, I've used big ones, I've drilled holes in the top, I've drilled holes in the bottom, I've tried relatively fresh and I've tried really old. And the longest burn time I've had so far is seven hours and it was in one like this. 
where I just put a hole in the center rather than up on top or anywhere else and I had to carry it open. Burned for seven hours. What the average is, is between four and five hours is what I'm getting out of these. And the fresh ones did not smolder and continue to smolder. They would go out. So the horse hoof has to be dry in order for it to work. I'm not early man. I wish I was still early. <laughs> but I'm not early man and this is still smoldering and Just because you don't see it smoking doesn't mean it's it's gone, but I wouldn't put an ember in one of these horse of fungus and then just forget about it I, I wouldn't do that at all, but it was fun to play with it was a fun experiment the horse hoof fungus used for the amadou which is in the fresh version which will be this orange layer that goes around the inside of the horse hoof. This layer has to come off, and then of course the pores underneath have to come off, and that amadou can be made into cloth, can be made into char cloth. Chaga takes a spark relatively easily. I can't make a spark relatively easily, but chaga takes a spark relatively easily. The birch polypore, it is said has also been used in the same way that the horse hoof has been used. All three mushrooms have been referred to as tender fungus, but I was told and have read at least in one place that chaga is the true tender fungus. The birch polypore is called the strop, stropper's fungus, and I've also heard rumor that this was used as that, but I, I do believe that was false information. I stropped a knife on a birch polypore and it seemed to work. I can't see a spot other than on a fresh one on a horse hoof where stropping a knife would work. Dawn's going to put a link in the comments below for a new company that started in Michigan. It's about foragers and homesteaders and it's for foragers and homesteaders. It's called Michigan forager's paradise sherry is a very personable woman check her out if you're interested in the link in the comments below safe and happy foraging guys